Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're talking about why today's electric vehicles are bad for towing and we're also going to look at Tesla's Cybertruck and talk about whether or not this might change things. Now I'm not here to bash electric vehicles. In fact I think they're far better than most people give them credit for. However I do think there are two major problems with today's electric vehicles. The first one being price. They are still quite expensive and then the second one being energy density. Energy density meaning that the batteries are still very large. They weigh a bunch and they don't hold all that much energy. Now this isn't really a problem if you're just driving yourself around town. Throw a kid in there. Heck, throw two kids in there. You're going to be just fine. You've got plenty of range. As long as you've got a place to charge at home, you come in and you've got a full battery every morning when you leave for the day. So as far as daily driving electric cars today, they're doing just fine. The problem comes in when you then try to tow something and so that's what this video is about. And I know looking at this, uh, this looks like an absolute mess, uh, but really the only thing all of this is showing here, this mess of numbers, is energy equals force times distance. That's the only thing we're interested in here, is how much energy is required to move around this electric vehicle, and how much energy do we have. So if nothing else that you get out of this, we're just looking at force times distance. That's a pretty simple equation. I think everyone can follow along with that. Give me 65% of your attention, and I think this is gonna blow your mind. The, the conclusions of this video are very cool, so I encourage you to bear with me here. So the first thing, for a little bit of background, we're going to look at several different vehicles. So the first thing we're looking at is energy. How much energy do each of these vehicles have on board? So we're starting with our Model X, P100D. It has 100 kilowatt hours of energy sitting in that battery pack. Next we have the Tesla Cybertruck and so we're going to assume that the 500 mile range version of this with the tri-motor is going to have about double the battery pack of this Model X P100D, so about a 200 kilowatt hour pack. That's pretty consistent given its range. And then we're going to look at something different, an internal combustion engine in the form of a Ford F-150, which has two gas tank options, a 23 gallon tank and a 36 gallon tank. Now one gallon of gasoline is the energy equivalent of 33.7 kilowatt hours, meaning this Ford F-150 with a full tank has either 775 kilowatt hours worth of energy with the smaller tank, or 1200 kilowatt hours worth of energy with the large tank. So you can see there's an enormous difference in how much energy you're starting with uh, at the beginning of your journey. Then we look at range, and this is where electric cars really start to shine. So we see that our Model X can travel about 330 miles, Cybertruck they're estimating about 500 miles, Ford's uh, range given its combined 19 MPG uh, with the EPA rating multiplied by the gallons that it has on board, it's looking about 437 miles of range with the smaller tank, 684 miles with the larger tank. So what does this mean? Well, our Cybertruck with about a fourth of the energy of the F-150 here, uh, the one with the smaller tank, is able to travel further. So it's insanely efficient. That's what's so cool about electric cars. They're so dang efficient versus these internal combustion engines. They have all this energy and what do they do with it? The same amount of work that an electric vehicle does with it. Okay, so let's say we want to go camping. Everyone loves camping, right? It's fun. So we're in the city, we want to get up in the mountains and enjoy some time out in the woods. So the mountains are 100 miles away and our city is at about sea level and the mountains are, you know, let's say one mile up, 5,280 feet. So the distance we're going to travel, this is on about a 1% grade. You can do the math, Pythagorean theorem. It turns out it's about 100 miles because we're going super far this way, not that far this way. So we're going over to this campground here up in the woods and we need to figure out to travel this 100 mile distance on this 1% grade, how much energy does it take? And remember, this all comes back to this equation right here. So we already know the distance we're traveling. We're traveling 100 miles, we're about 160 kilometers. We just need to figure out what is the force required in order to push this system, our little truck, and our trailer, our camper, up to the campground. Now, I didn't tell you guys that this video requires a little bit of trigonometry, but trigonometry is gross. That's why I wrote, ew. If you do like trigonometry, well, here's the equations for figuring out theta, the degree of our angle here, here's our normal force, and here's the force of gravity pulling back on our system. If you don't like trigonometry, ignore that nonsense. You don't have to know it for the conclusions in this video. Now for our first example, we are going camping with a Tesla Model X. So there's some variables we need to know about our vehicle. So the Model X P100D weighs about 5,500 pounds. 
we're gonna say we're gonna have 500 pounds of cargo. That's, you know, your family, whatever stuff you're bringing. So all the people and all the stuff inside, 500 pounds. Now we're also saying that you are towing a trailer. The Model X is rated for about 5,000 pounds. So we're pulling a 5,000 pound camper along with us. Now the Model X's drag coefficient is 0.25. That is insanely good. However, when you stick a trailer on, it kind of ruins that entire system. Uh, we're gonna give it a drag coefficient of 0.4. This is still actually really generous. What happens with that air is it hits the vehicle and then it wraps around and then it comes back and hits that trailer. So it's kind of hitting you twice and you want that trailer and vehicle to be as close together as possible. But of course there's going to be a gap there. And as a result, the aerodynamics are very poor. And then for the area of the uh, trailer here, we're using 40 square feet as the frontal area of our trailer. Where did I get this number? Well, I look at standardized weight ratings uh, for trailers and what their area ends up being, SAEJ. 2807 and that's where I got this number from. So those are some variables we need to know and we have our system and it is moving up this hill. We need to figure out what is the force required to get it up that hill and move those 100 miles. So we have three things resisting this motion. We have aerodynamic drag. There's air pushing up against our vehicle as it travels along at whatever speed it is traveling. We have rolling resistance. So we've got energy that's being lost through the tires. And then we have gravity, of course. Gravity is pulling us down this hill. So let's get started with aerodynamic drag. The force of resistance here is equal to one half air's density, which we have right here, multiplied by our velocity squared. In this case, we're traveling at 75 miles per hour. It's about 120 kilometers per hour. We multiply that by our drag coefficient of our system. Right here, we're guessing uh, 0.4. And then we're multiplying that by our area. 40 square feet is the total frontal area of the system. So when we multiply all of that out, we get a force of 230 pounds. Next, we have rolling resistance. So our force here is equal to our normal force multiplied by our coefficient of rolling resistance. This is the coefficient of rolling resistance for a tire on cement or asphalt. We're gonna go with about 0.015. And then we have already calculated our normal force over here. So we have an 11,000 pound system. We multiply that by cosine of our angle and multiply that by our coefficient of rolling resistance. And we get 165 pounds force. Finally, we need to account for gravity. So we have an 11,000 pound system and we're multiplying that by sine of theta, which is giving us the component of gravity, which is pulling us down this hill. Multiplying that out, you get a 110 pound force. Okay, hang with me here. This is the mind blowing part. So we take our force, we multiply that by our distance, which is 100 miles. And then we multiply that by a conversion factor because once we multiply the force by the distance, that is now in units of energy. We simply convert those units into the form of units which we like, which is kilowatt hours. And so if we do that, 230 multiplied by 100 miles, multiplied by our conversion factor, for aerodynamic drag alone, we need 45.8 kilowatt hours. Moving on to rolling resistance, if we multiply this number by our distance, and our conversion factor, we now need 32.8 kilowatt hours to overcome rolling resistance. And doing the math for gravity, we need 21.9 kilowatt hours. So if we add each one of these up, all of our resisting forces here, how much total energy do we need in order to get to this campground? 100.4 kilowatt hours. What? Houston, we have a problem. We need 100.4 kilowatt hours of energy to achieve this task, but we only have 100 kilowatt hours worth of energy. It's literally not possible. And so here's where we run into the challenge with towing with electric cars. Because if you have an electric vehicle like the Tesla Model X and you actually use it for towing, it cannot do this task. It can't even go 100 miles. It doesn't have the energy to do it. So while it is insanely efficient, and if you're not towing around, you can actually go a pretty good distance. You can recharge, all that kind of nice stuff. If you put it in this towing scenario, it literally doesn't have enough energy on board to complete it. It doesn't matter how efficient it is, even if it was 100% efficient, it cannot do it. And so that's the struggle here. Now you might say, Jason, why were you driving so fast while you were towing? And my answer to you would be, well, I wanna get where I'm going and I'm driving the speed limit. Uh, but let's say you wanted to drive slower because you think that while you're towing, you should drive slower. Okay, let's analyze this looking at our entire system moving at 60 miles per hour instead of 75 or about 100 kilometers per hour. The total amount of energy required to do this exact same scenario here is 84 kilowatt hours. And so, 
we're now still assuming that we have 84% system efficiency in order to be able to complete this task. And that's not including things like if we need to run our heater or the AC, other internal systems. We're not including any of that. Just looking at, you know, the energy efficiency of the vehicle would need to be at least 84% in order to complete this task. It makes the case very hard that it would actually be able to do this. Uh, and then on top of this, you know, either of these scenarios, you're going to be stopping about, you know, every 75 minutes in order to recharge. So you drive for 75 minutes, you charge for 50. It's not going to be great as far as towing on a road trip. And then just as a bit of a sanity check, I wanted to look at how much energy would this Model X require if we were not pulling a trailer, we're just taking the Model X and we're going up this hill and we've got better aerodynamics and less overall weight. And it would be 51 0.3 kilowatt hours. So a significantly better and you can see that you know it's very possible when you are not towing uh, in order to complete this task. Simple to do with the Model X. Unfortunately once you stick that trailer on it kind of kills the whole thing. Okay so our next question. Can Tesla's Cybertruck save us here? We just want to go out in the woods and go camping. So looking at the three motor Cybertruck with the 500 miles of range we're assuming a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack double that of the Model X. We're giving it a generous weight of 6,000 pounds. I think it's probably going to be significantly heavier than that. 500 pounds for occupants and stuff. It has, uh, Tesla claims, a tow rating of 14,000 uh, pounds. Elon has tweeted they might be able to get the drag coefficient down to 0.3. Would be super impressive if they could. And then the overall system, we're going to give it the same aerodynamics as our Model X to be generous and kind to it. I looked up uh, standardized trailers for 14,000 pounds and the area, the square foot area of the front of that trailer is about 60 square feet. So we do all the same math, each one of these different systems here, and we look at how much total energy does it need for aerodynamics, uh, for rolling resistance, and for gravity. For aerodynamic drag, we're looking at 68.6 kilowatt hours. For rolling resistance, 61.1 kilowatt hours. And then gravity pulling it back down this hill, 40.8 kilowatt hours. And so the total energy, you sum all of this up, 170.5 kilowatt hours. And remember, we're starting with a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack. So that means we need to be at about 85% efficiency in order for this to work out. And that's not using any of the other systems on the vehicle, heating, cooling. Uh, you know, if it's cold outside, it's going to reduce the efficiency. So it's again very tough that this thing is going to be able to do it if in fact it does have a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack. Now, if we travel at 60 miles per hour instead of 75 miles per hour, yes, we do save some energy. We're at 145.8, but we're still at about 75% of our total battery capacity in order to travel 100 miles. So think about that. We're traveling 100 miles, then we need to recharge a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack. That's going to take some time even with 250 kilowatt uh, chargers. So we're going to be spending a lot of time charging if you are in fact pulling a rated load with this Cybertruck. Now here's another very interesting point. If we do all this with a Ford F-150 and we look at the total energy required in order for it to do the same thing as this Cybertruck, the F-150 actually can't tow quite as much. It's about 13,000 pounds for its tow rating, but it has worse aerodynamics. Either way, the math ends up working out to be about the same, 170 kilowatt hour of energy that it needs in order to complete this task. But look at how much energy this thing has. It's an insane amount of energy that it starts with. And so as a result, it only needs to operate at 14% efficiency in order to make this task work. So it's able to do it. These things can operate at 14% efficiency. No problem. The thing's going to be able to go these 100 miles. And yes, it's going to be expensive to refill because you're refilling a 36 gallon tank. That's quite massive but it is able to do it. You refill the tank and you're back on your way. So that's why it's so easy to do with an F-150. And the challenge today with these electric cars is that the battery size is so small, even if they're really efficient, you just don't have enough energy to do this task. Now I can feel it. You're looking at me and you're saying, Jason, you're being unfair to the electric cars. Who drives a mile up? Okay, let's get rid of the whole mile up thing. I wanted to go camping out in the mountains. You guys don't want to go camping, it's fine. We're not going camping. We're going to go to Florida and we're just going to drive in a flat straight line forever for 100 miles. So we do this in a flat straight line in Florida with our Model X, with our 5,000 pound trailer. And how much energy does it take? 78.6. Where does that come from? Well, we take the total amount of energy. We don't have to worry about gravity anymore. So we're subtracting this out. We get 78.6 
kilowatt hours required in order to do this on flat ground. Still 80% of the battery to travel 100 miles, not that far. Okay, but what about regeneration? Certainly what goes up must come down. So if we're going up into the woods to go camping, once we turn around and we're coming back down this hill, then we get to regenerate energy the whole way back and we have a nice full battery when we get back to the city, right? Uh, unfortunately not right. So if you want to calculate how much energy does it take to go these 100 miles downhill, we still have the same amount of aerodynamic drag, we have the same amount of rolling resistance, we then get to subtract the energy for gravity here because it's working for us instead of against us, and so the total amount of energy required to go these 100 miles here are 56.7 kilowatt hours more than taking this Model X uphill by itself. So yes, we are going downhill, but it still requires a ton of energy because of aerodynamic drag, we're traveling at 75 miles per hour, and because of rolling resistance. Rolling resistance becomes pretty significant once you have a really heavy system, which we do here because of adding on the weight of that trailer and the fact that the electric car is pretty heavy. So unfortunately, there really aren't any good scenarios for the Model X to travel at a decent distance while pulling along its rate load. Okay, conclusions, and as it says right here, some good news. So the overall theme of this vehicle, electric vehicles are plenty capable of towing things. They have the torque, they have the ability to do it, they don't have the onboard energy to do it at a meaningful distance. So that is the real challenge here, is that it just simply requires a certain amount of energy to move a mass from one spot to another, and while electric vehicles are insanely efficient, they don't have much energy in them, and so unfortunately the math just works out where it's very difficult for them to be able to complete tasks like this, especially at rated load. Now, what is the good news? Well, the good news is, let's go back to this Ford F-150 for a second. It only needs about 14% efficiency to complete this task. In reality, this thing's probably operating at about 30% efficiency, so it can probably do this task about twice, meaning it's about twice as good as this Tesla Cybertruck here. So, if battery technology improves simply two times, especially if it improves three times, if we triple our energy density or double our energy density of today's current battery technology, then we are in the sweet spot and electric cars are going to be running away with this all day. So there is the potential for it to happen. We have seen this kind of improvement in electric batteries, and there's no reason to assume why they won't do this in the future. So as we continue to improve electric batteries, simply two to three times, perhaps on trailers you can incorporate solar panels. You know, if there's enough efficient energy generation coming onto that trailer, you could help extend the range. So there are solutions that probably will come out in the future, especially if energy density of batteries is improved. We just simply aren't there right now today. So thank you all so much for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, of course feel free to leave them below.